morning, we are diving into 2.3, which is all about polynomials, right? We did quadratics in 2.1, and then we did power functions, which was basically just a, the monomial part of a polynomial. And now we are actually going to look at polynomials, which is, to be honest, where you spent a lot of time in Algebra 2, right? You did the chapter on quadratics, and then you did Chapter 6, which was polynomials. And then you did um, lots of things in those two units that we're going to kind of review and touch on, which will be a nice opportunity to kind of gather more of your thoughts around that. So as we're working through this, what are some important properties of polynomials and their graphs? So polynomials, let's define them, but we're going to define them kind of mathematically, which I think will be okay, and I know you'll do fine with, but a polynomial we are going to define it as f of x, so we're going to, it's a function, and then we're going to name each of the terms, a, n, x to the nth. So in other words, there's our first term, and notice the, the subscript on a matches the exponent for the degree. So if I keep going, a, n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, all the way down to a 1 for x to the first. Now, we don't usually write x to the first, but we'll do it just to kind of match the pattern. And then a to the 0. Okay. Now, are we used to seeing them written like that? No. But it's okay for us to experience things a little bit differently. So I'm going to chunk it up here a little bit. First of all, this an is what is called our leading coefficient. And the exponent is our degree. If the exponent is to 5, it is a fifth degree quintic polynomial. If the degree is 2, it's quadratic. This number in the back, this a0, that's our constant term. It's so hopefully some language you've seen before. Now, we can talk all about the shape of our polynomials based on whether the degree is even or odd and the leading coefficient is positive or negative. So I'm going to show you four graphs. One, two, three, four, okay? The first one's going to look like this. Notice it has two turns, excuse me, two turns, and the arrows are going in opposite directions with the right-hand arrow going up. I'm going to draw the same graph but reflect it essentially like so. These two graphs... In these two graphs, the degree is an odd number. In other words, in both of these, it's 3. But when the arrows are going opposite directions, the degree is odd. And our leading coefficient, in this case, is positive or negative based on what we are doing on the right-hand side of our graph. So when the graph is going up, we can assume the leading coefficient is positive. It's going down, we can assume it's negative. The final two graphs are going to be the degree being even. Right, and these are going to kind of be reflections. Now, we've talked about even and odd functions, and so far, using that language, Because of how these graphs don't have that perfect symmetry, we wouldn't call them capital O odd. We're just saying that the degree is odd. So important clarifying piece of information. Now again, look at the arrow on the right to decide what you can say about your graph. In this case, arrow on the right is going up, so my leading coefficient is positive. Arrow on the left going down, my leading coefficient is negative. So let's lock some words in here. The degree... 
determines the shape. And remember, odd degree, the arrows are going opposite directions. The leading coefficient determines the end behavior or the direction of the right-hand side of the graph. That's what RHS is going to stand for, is right-hand side. Okay. Now, we can make sketches of graphs based on what we know, right? We know the constant term is actually going to double as the y-intercept, right? If you didn't know that, hopefully now you do. So that constant term is going to be part of the y-intercept. You can also find the x-intercepts by solving some polynomials. So I'm just going to walk you through a quick example of how to solve a polynomial. because we're gonna get the opportunity to do a little solving with polynomials. My favorite way to solve a polynomial is graph it, but I wanna show you another way as well. So here's an example, x to the fourth minus x to the third minus six x to the second equals zero. The first thing I notice is that I have a GCF of x squared. If I pull x squared from x to the fourth, there's two x's left standing. If I pull it from x to the third, there's 1x. And if I take it away from 6x squared, it's just 0. Okay? So immediately, we had a GCF of x squared that we can pull to the front. Now, after attacking that GCF, I know that x squared minus x minus 6 can factor further. And I can factor it using the x method. X method is great in these, in these problems when we have three terms. What multiplies to negative 6? So it's either going to be 3 and 2 or 6 and 1. And adds together to make negative 1. That's where we're going to get negative 3 and positive 2. Because negative 3 times positive 2 is negative 6. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So X minus 3, X plus 2. Now I need my solutions. My three solutions are x equals 0, x equals positive 3, and x equals negative 2. Remember, x lies. If x minus 3 is what's in the parentheses, then x equals 3 is our solution. Some vocab here. x equals 0 is kind of a unique situation. x equals 0 has multiplicity of 2. That means it is technically a solution twice. And that comes from the fact that it was x squared. If it would have been x to the fifth, it has multiplicity 5, right? So we can tell the multiplicity based on how it's written in factored form, how many times something shows up. Okay, so let's take a deeper dive into this idea of multiplicity. The multiplicity, whoops, my bad, I apologize. The multiplicity of a number is the number of times It is a solution. Okay. So if I have, let's say I have, um, it's kind of tied to the exponents. So let's say just really quickly an example. Let's say I had this. I have um, x minus 1 squared, x plus 2, and then x to the third. Positive 1 has multiplicity 2, negative 2 has multiplicity 1, and 0 has multiplicity 3, right? These exponents are super helpful in telling the multiplicity. There'd be a 1 on that parenthesis. Why do we care about the multiplicity? Well, 
the multiplicity of a solution impacts the shape of the graph at that solution. So solutions are tied to the x-axis, but depending on what the multiplicity is of those solutions, the graph will look different at that x-axis. Let's look at four graphs. In this first one, I'm just going to draw a parabola. Notice how the graph just crosses nicely through here. Okay, just to give you a warning, because of the timing of this, the bell's going to ring soon. And so it might ring while I'm talking, and I apologize if that makes you jump. Anyway, this graph crosses right through the axis, so we have a multiplicity of 1. If I change my multiplicity to 2, my graph no longer crosses through. It does sort of a bounce. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I knew that was going to happen. It does a bounce. And that bounce, where we hit the axis and bounce off, that determines a multiplicity of 2. If I increase to a multiplicity of 3, I still pass through. Odd multiplicities cross over to the other side. Even multiplicities do a bounce. If I do a multiplicity of 3... It gets sort of this wiggle, right? The graph still crosses over, but it flattens out on its way. And the bigger the multiplicity, the flatter the graph gets. Grab your graphing calculator right now, and let's just graph something and give it like x to the 64th. Your graph is going to be extremely, extremely flat. Um, if I did multiplicity... Let's say I made it really flat. See how there's that big flat spot in the middle? Right about there. That's an odd multiplicity because I crossed over to the other side. And it's probably, if I look at how flat my 3 is, I'm going to say this is multiplicity 7. Do I know for sure? No. I know it's probably more than 3, and so I'm just making my guess. But... My final hint, odd crosses over, even bounces, as you're getting practice with that. So hopefully this helps you with some of the language on